so right here you can see this is September the 5th and this is the Hurricane Dorian that is still spinning out there it's just right about south uh, South Carolina North Carolina area the dot there is Tampa that is pretty close to where we are. We're in Pinellas Park, but it's pretty close. Thanks for everybody that asked about us. We didn't even have any wind, so knock on wood, we don't get another one, but thanks for asking about us, and let's get back to the movie. All right, so we're at the junkyard, and it's pretty hot today, which it always is. It's 90 degrees out. It's 98 at the junkyard for some reason. Space two. So I've got to look on the number of these cars that do actually put this somewhat in order. Row 13, space 2. There it is. See the black brace goes all the way across there. Got no door handles. It's kind of like our car. It's sad to see these cars smashed like this. It's got... 154,000 miles but yeah this is what we need right here this is where the carpet clips to so cool we can get these clips this is all painted black nice thing about a Florida car is we don't really deal with rust but you see how beefy this thing is let me take it apart and I'll show you it is, is that all 12s? Ah, that sucks I think it's 12 at least I brought a ratchet for it Give you an idea how thick that is. See, it's like eight inch. It's a three-piece deal, so it's pretty heavy. So it's a good job we're replacing that because it is structure of the car. If you ever get T-boned, that would obviously protect the car from folding up. I always like being able to go to the junkyard and see this stuff when it's assembled because we need this clip there. You see that bracket that goes down here and it holds this inside of the door panel. Well, I was wondering what was down there because there's a hole behind it but nothing really to go in. So it's good that we can see that because I need that piece too. Every piece is mint. I mean, even the bolts, the bolts are all nice and clean and gold. As you see, everything's perfect, so that's a plus, but the problem is, is all our clips and plastic deteriorates from the sun, it gets brittle. So I'll go ahead and cash these out and I'll let you know what it ends up costing us and I'll head back to the shop. So that cost uh, $32.65 and he put them down as brackets, he didn't know what they were. Medium steel bracket, that's close enough. So that's actually a good find, I'm happy with that, again it's a safety thing. Those things weigh a ton. I bet they weigh 40 pounds between carrying those things and my big stupid gun that I didn't use. <laughs> that was quite a workout, dragging those all the way across the yard, but we're good. We'll uh, head back to the shop. All right, so we're back in our shop. Here's the pieces I just pulled. I'm gonna go ahead and clean them, get this out of here, make them look pretty, and put them in our car. Okay, so now it is in, and like I mentioned, this thing is actually quite heavy. Somebody's going to say, well, why don't you leave it out and, you know, make the car faster? Well, the idea isn't to make the car lightweight and to make it faster. It's got to be a daily driver type build where you can drive it and enjoy it and it's got to work. But I want it to be safe too, hence, you know, the structure and hence the seatbelts. Well, the car doesn't have airbags, which... I'm still kind of torn about that. I did buy a new wheel. I couldn't get the JDM wheel, which I wanted, but I'm still kind of torn. The wheel that I've got for it is really nice. and It's going to work with the build. So stay tuned on that. You never know, I might bail out on that wheel and get something else. But now that support is in, um, these brackets, uh, the clips broke. I got to see if I can find some more of those. Uh, the door panels, I got to still clip those in the walk clip all the way. They're the pins just keep kind of bending there's a hole and if the pin isn't perfectly lined up it won't go in the pin tends to keep doing that again it's just what you deal with working with all the stuff so I'll work on those door panels a little bit and then the seat can go in and then the back piece there I don't know if I've got that board for this car I don't think I do so I might end up going back to the junkyard because that car that I just pulled the bracing out of 
had a really nice piece. Okay, so we're going down our famous road. When I say it's a famous road, I keep hearing from our followers that say, hey, I watch your series and I drive down this road and I recognize it. So that's actually kind of cool, right? So this is 49th Street. We're heading back to Superior first. We're gonna go get the mirrors and door handles. Uh, one thing to notice, you see they've tucked the big American flag down. Well, they were anticipating the storm gonna be coming really close to us and anything that could be loose or fly apart, anything like that, it gets removed and everything gets strapped down. And of course, we are so lucky that we missed that big storm. So here we are. Wow, what is it with all the sirens? Every time I film, there is an emergency vehicle. So pick the parts up. We've got the two door handles and the mirrors. Now I've got to drive extra careful with these things in the truck. I should have actually picked these up last, but now I've got to drive extra careful. So again, it doesn't show up on camera as good as it does in real life. It always makes them look kind of orange and pink, but it really is a beautiful red. So he told me when the car is assembled, bring it back so we can do a final polish. You can see actually the quality of the finish on this compared to the car because what he said he did is a wet sand and just a, a quick buff to get it kind of close and then they like the paint to breathe a little bit more. I don't know. I'm not that far deep into it, but I appreciate him doing that. He wants the paint to really stand out. So I said, don't worry about it. I'm going to have my detail guy come and do the paint correction and he'll bring it to the next level. That's going to be exciting because that'll be like almost end of the episode. It'll mean the car is done. So so this is probably overkill for what we're doing, but it's always easier when you have airflow to make power. So the more airflow you get, the easier it is to make power and gives us a little bit more sealing just in case we need it. So this is the Skunk Street B-Series manifold. It is a nice manifold, but one of the things that we do is these Allen bolts is change those and we're gonna put the nice stainless button heads in there. And of course we want everything to look nice and pretty so it'll match the rest of our style, which is the stainless Allen heads and then of course when we bolt it to the head we'll be using the eight millimeter Allens too so it should look pretty cool and of course we've got the matching throttle body yeah of course great manifold dual bolt pattern for all your b-series VTEC heads and if you go back what three or four years ago watch the video of us putting this on my Integra in real time making 10 wheel horsepower with the bolt on that's true but think of you've got a skunk 2 manifold already and just bolting this on with nothing else putting it on all we're doing is making this show if it makes power or not and yeah. it did it was, it was pretty already impressive a, already an aftermarket intake manifold to begin with so it wasn't like a stock manifold to this manifold test it was an aftermarket manifold to another aftermarket manifold so yeah this again we're not looking at a ton of power but you know how things go we're kind of overbuilding the car just in case we need it and of course it's better to overbuild it and underuse it for reliability purposes so this will be good for 600 horsepower if we ever need it and i think that's what they said the turbo was good for i'd have to check with kirk at boost lab but i believe he said the turbo is good for about 600 total horsepower so it's always good to have all the parts matching and having the capability just in case you need it this sure comes in black too. Yeah, it comes way back. So the fuel filter goes here, doesn't it? Isn't yeah, it? Is the, it there? The canister just hits it. The rig, yeah, the regular fuel filter is here, and it's really, really tight here on that video we talked about. I think George's we got his filter and just kind of moved it. Yeah, I just unbolted it for the video because yeah, we wanted all real time. We, we were trying to do it real time. We didn't want to do any, you know, funny business. So we have our Scon2 manifold prepped and it's ready to install. When I say prepped, they sell you this cool little bracket that comes with it and it's to hold the ISE so it works correctly it bolts to the bracket and then you see we have the two additional AN fittings right there we have a dash 3 and a dash 4 and they're boost lines they're basically boost reference one goes to the blow valve and one goes to the wastegate let me go ahead and show you those real quick so this is our line for the blow valve this is a, a dash 3 an this is nice it's a little bit more reliable than the rubber hoses because you're not worried about the hose 
coming loose or splitting or getting you know baked from the heat and coming loose and having a problem so this is a much more reliable source and again i want to say thank you again to boost lab for supplying this valve for us the bluff valve is going to be in this area somewhere we've left the line long enough just so we have a little bit of flexibility i don't know if it's going to sit there sit on its side sit this way somewhere around here uh real quick this is a red horse inline filter what we've done is cut the factory line and put a compression fit in into a dash six and then this is bolted to the firewall we're going to come off here with a dash six again it's overkill i know that i know this doesn't need this much but again you never know i might get the idea to turn up the boost if i sell the car the next guy buys it i want to say the head's good for 10,000 rpms the bottom end's good for 750 the turbo is good for 600 the manifold's good for probably 500 i've done five on those manifolds this is the larger master cylinder this we got it for the type r it's the biggest one that you can fit on this booster you need it when you do the five look conversion when you do the bigger calipers i see the power steering line is on everything's starting to come together now ac line just has to be put back on once we're done with this area here we're going to put the down pipe on we're going to seal all this make sure it's 100 percent right put the down pipe on start building the flex and then of course the exhaust will be coming after that so the table is starting to thin off there's still a bag of hardware in here the emblems a few other bits and pieces we're not going to be putting those speakers back in they were in the front and it had this little crossover and a little tweeter that wasn't wired up correctly but this bench is actually nice to see the wood under it because it was piled this deep for the longest time that was this guy's idea by the way so if it don't work george thanks for making me go to the junkyard and walk around and pull there's, stuff and bring it back something else you want you got to get something else while you're there that's it and there's esther out the window you're out of uniform esther that's not a blue lht t-shirt this is sundress esther right. yeah not. it's a special edition for friday i know but in our in our dress code it doesn't mention anything about dresses it's it's hot i know Florida, so that's well, okay. you also said that it doesn't mention anything about them, so that doesn't mean she can't, right? Yeah. That's true. She's also a girl, too, so she can wear a dress. So we're going to go back to the junkyard, mess around with this seat, go pull a bunch of stuff, go lay in the dust. Uh, it's about 92 outside, so that means the junkyard is going to be about 115. Heat index of 100, so yeah, it feels like 100 today. Well, if it feels like 100, it's 115 at the junkyard because yeah. it's always hotter. All right, so our downpipe still fits. We're just sizing it right now, but that is our high flow cat, the three inch cat. And then we're gonna put the stainless bellows on here as a flex. I see it's tied to the back of the motor there. So this is where the flex will be. And then on the back of that flex, we're gonna put a flange as demonstrated by George. And then we'll run exhaust in the usual location back here. But that, Looks like it's going to tuck up there pretty tight. That should work out pretty nice. All right, so our downpipe is finished. It's ready to go on. You've seen this in earlier episodes. What we just did is add the 200 cell cap and the bellows, and then we're going to a V-bend right here. We'll show you what is going on the end of this pretty soon, but now we can install this. Note the brace right here this is to add support to the back of the engine so it doesn't put all the stress on this end i can't see this breaking but this is something that a lot of people don't do and it's something the factory does so obviously it's there for a good reason we also have a flex on our dump tube right here and it is recirculated so it's nice and quiet when you go into boost you're not going to get that noise out of the engine bay it just makes a seamless cool boost sound so we've got the intercooler mounted we'll mount it here and here it's nice and tight i don't want to pull it too much because the car is hanging on the lift but that means the intercooler is mounted the pipes can just hold the weight of themselves a lot of people tend to make the pipes hold up the intercooler and then put a couple of zip ties around here we're not going to do that so we haven't got it yet but we ordered a pusher fan that should fit just in here the clearance of the fan i've got is 2.1 inches in the middle we have 2.5 there so hopefully we can put a push fan here and then on the back side of the radiator is going to be a pull fan the reason we're doing a push fan here is so it isn't jammed between the radiator and the manifold we want to have a little bit of air room and obviously somewhere to dissipate 
the heat. So we're gonna prep it. We have the turbo tight. The downpipe can go on. We'll mount it and then we'll show you the next step. All right, so for this clam here, let me give you one of our tips. And this tip is earned from many times of these things not coming apart, not being able to tighten them up. So I'll show you, ready? Okay, so like everything, there is like a tip and tricks to put that door handle in. It isn't just a put it in and clip it. You gotta sit and get it just right and then adjust it. But once it's adjusted and everything's new like this, check this out. This is how nice that closes. It closes like a new car. Isn't that amazing? Also to adjust this, there is an adjustable rod here and you can make this basically latch, unlatch at any point. You can make it where you barely touch it or come all the way to the top. You wanna try and get it in the middle. So that way you're not pulling the handle all the way to extend and potentially breaking the handle. So right about in the middle there. So I did assemble the door handles. It, do, it seems like yesterday that I went over to Superior and pulled this apart. I pulled the lock out of it. I don't know if you remember that video. Putting it back together was a different story because I didn't, I separated this and I couldn't figure out how to get it back together and the clip to snap in. So of course the first one took 15 minutes. The second one took 45 seconds, but we can't put these on yet because we need to power up the system and move the glass. See, this is the glass right here. It's covering the door handle right here. So we can't get to the back of here. It has to attach and then it bolts on right here. So once we power everything up, we can connect our switch panel, put the window up, put the door handle in, but the seal is on. The mirror is on again it's little at a time it's way more time consuming than you realize but it does start to come together it's starting to look good now my first favorite part is that door check that have you ever seen an integra close like that no you haven't unless you're as old as me and you remember these cars when they came out look at that that is unbelievable red sea belts type r seats red stitching on a red car it doesn't get much better than that does it that is awesome that's probably one of my favorite things it's a tough choice between that and the door the way the door closes wow that was lucky yeah it was so what do you think that is we're looking at this and debating if this is a bad radiator if it's got a, a really slow leak in it again it looks kind of particularly yucky there it's not from the AC condenser. The AC condenser is uh, clean and dry, and of course it's been holding Freon for the last six years or so. So, I don't know, maybe it's time just to say bye-bye to this thing. It's been in the car at least 10 years. I don't know, what do you think? Should we pressure check it or should we just say, you know what, we're this far? Maybe we just redo it. It can go either way. Don't say that, George. People take that the wrong way. I mean, it is beat up, like you said, it's been here for a long time. Yeah, I remember a bunch of fins. This fan has been rattling around too, it's been... Well, this side here is where all the fins are smashed, the, the front side. They're all flattened out in there. I mean, we could go through there and do it. But look, look at the core right there, it's actually... Something's hit it. ...worn through. That might actually be worn through. See the little line down the middle of it? Oh, yeah. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. So, I hope you're enjoying the content. Uh, we had a couple of cancellations this week, of course the storm was heading this way, so we cancelled a couple of appointments based on the fact that we might have to close and move or who knows what. And then we had a couple of people say, well, I couldn't get my car there because of the storm. So that allowed us this week to double up on this car. We've been full on this car, both of us, all week. So that's why I'm trying to get as much content to you as can. There's a lot of people uh, messaging saying how much they enjoy the series, and I appreciate that, I really do. So I'm trying to get as much content as I can put together and get it to you so I don't drag it out too long. I don't want to make these long tease videos. I know I did kind of a little bit with the paint, but that's because the car wasn't ready. So just to give you the heads up, it's going to take a little break right now. 
this is an awesome car but the customer's car is way more important than this there is the next car sitting here so we are going to be working on that and we will pick up here between cars on this one and we'll show you it as we go so don't forget to hit the subscribe button click the bell share our channel help us grow help us make more content and make more cool videos thanks for watching and I don't forget enjoy your cars